Yeah, again, it's me, the original pile driver. It's been a while since I made a video. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet in just a few minutes. So, basically, I have a really pr big problem with the ultimate one, Warrior. I mean, the dude's a douchebag, okay? He sits and he does he does talk a lot of crap on his, on his YouTube about people doing this and that. And then Kevin Nash has an issue with that. He takes offense to that. And he mentions, he's like, so you want to talk crap? Back it up with your action. And then Warrior goes on and on about how Kevin Nash is a dirty scumbag, how he's keeping people from their spot. Well, in the, I'll have a list of names here. Just a few off the top of my head. Warrior. Warrior. Uh, of people that uh, weren't held back by either Triple H, aka Paul, as you put it, or Kevin Nash. The number one name I'm going to start off with is the guy I like the least out of all of these names. But the fact is that he has been on top for the past, you know, few years, multiple years actually, uh, and since being in the WWE itself, ten plus years, or ten ten years or so, give or take. John Cena. No, I am not a fan of John Cena. Any any of my friends on YouTube or Facebook or anybody that likes wrestling just like myself knows that I do not like John Cena. And I'm I, I'm you know I like the underdog. I like the young guy because when everybody else hates him, I'm I'm the kind of person who wants to sit and say, yeah, I want to see this guy do good. And so when Cena first started, I liked him, but now he irritates the piss out of me. But he's on top. He doesn't have to have a title. No one has to have a title to be on the top or to have their spot that they deserve. Because just because somebody works their ass off to be a sports entertainer um, doesn't mean that they have to have a world championship. And Randy Orton, Batista. Now, Batista left, yes. He's not there now, no. But he wasn't held back. Randy Orton wasn't held back. Yeah, they had years of experience in wrestling, but they were new to the, to the company. They were fresh face to the company. So I think, you know, while Orton may have had his spot because of the respect of his family uh, and everything, that, that's irrelevant. The fact is that he was there and he made it to the top. Batista made it to the top. Cena made it to the top. Those guys all came in from OVW around the same time. So you're telling me that those guys were held back by Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash wasn't even really doing anything at the time. He was with TNA Wrestling, which he was with for multiple years up until about a year or so ago. So that right there, mm, I don't know. Let's go to a more recent few people who came in around roughly the same time, have been with the company, give or take five years. The Miz, Mike Mizanin, who got his claim to fame from the real world, some punk kid that went on reality TV and became an instant sensation. Like him or not, he creates a buzz. Okay? Been world champion. Isn't now. Still at the peak of, of you know the talent roster. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, who by all standards probably will never be world champion in the next you know few months or so, but he's on that top tier. He's in that picture against one of the best CM Punk, the best in the world. Hey Jericho, um, and Jack Swagger. All these guys have came in within the past five years. They're not held back. They've all been. Heavyweight champion, world champion, some sort of main champion, which means they've held the ball for whatever reason. Someone has put enough stock into them to say, you deserve to wear this title for at least a few weeks. Now, that could be transitional champions, whatever. The fact is, they were put in the main picture. Were they held back by Kevin Nash or Triple H? No. If anything, you know, they were pushed forward. And, and going back to the, the first list, John Cena... I remember seeing an interview with, with Mr. Pauly, Mr. Triple H himself, which could have been a work interview, who knows. But he said that Cena sucked, and everybody knows Cena sucks, but they like him anyway. The fact is he works hard, even though he sucks, and he's lame, and he's stale, it gets over, and it generates revenue, and it's profitable. So that's not being held back, in my opinion. Warrior, 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 warrior. And then, you know, another few names who aren't as high up. David Otunga, he's like the lawyer of the general manager or whatever. The point is, he's in this top storyline. He's in this, you know, thing where um, where he's actually 
of some sort of importance. And like the warrior who just rants and rants like Damien Demento. And then uh, we got Daniel Bryan, who yeah he's been in wrestling quite a while and he's not a new name or a, or or a young guy by any means. But the fact is he's fresh to the company within the past two plus years, give or take. Uh, uh, you know, and he's world champion. So he's been really held back by Kevin Nash right now. Kevin Nash came back to claim that spot, huh? And Kevin Nash is holding Daniel Bryan back. Kevin Nash is holding Dolph Ziggler back. Kevin Nash is holding back Jack Swagger, The Miz, Batista, Randy Orton, Cena, with the exception of Batista, who held himself back by leaving, which I can't blame him. The PG is kind of lame, but it gets over. It works. And then Zack Ryder, woo, 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 you know it. Only because he's entertaining. People see that, and he got a spot. He's not a main event superstar. No, he's not world champion, but he doesn't need to be world champion. That's the emphasis. Okay, yeah. The warrior stepped away. Because why? Was it a true love of the game? Was it a true love and respect for the fans? You held up a show at one point because you didn't get paid right away. Let me tell you something about people that are not getting paid. Look at the ECW. Yeah, people don't have respect for the ECW because it's dead and gone. But those people put on some of the best entertainment that I've ever seen in my life up to this day. Tommy Dreamer versus Sandman was better than any John Cena WrestleMania match. It was better than any <laughs> Ultimate Warrior match. It was better than anything that I've ever seen put up by WCW, by Warrior by Hulk Hogan by Ric Flair better than any of that. So before you go running your mouth about how even people at the concession stands know what kind of conniving manipulative force that Kevin Nash really is, and before you go talking about a talent budget, the WWE he was a multi-million dollar co a, a global conglomerate who could spend the money. They can afford to spend the money. They could give everybody the money that they want. The you know. And no one is at, no one's at Nash's defense. I'll tell you what, I didn't like Nash. He's some of what you're saying is true, but you know, that whole four life click woo, no, whatever. Believe it or not, I don't care. But comparing yourself to someone like that, what does one warrior nation really stand for? What does it really mean? You're thinking about yourself. And you want to make your opinions clear. And you want to make people believe in your opinions. And screw anybody else's. This has been a public service announcement brought to you by the original power driver. And special thanks to Sprint. Get a contract now. To your commitment. Get a brand new phone for blah blah. I'm not, I'm not plugging anything. Catch you later. Peace.